You know, man, <laughs> I've sacrificed a lot, but nothing like Tommy Robinson, a political prisoner, who they now admit was moved into a Muslim wing and who they are, he's been, who they are saying they're going to kill him and there is an imam putting a fatwa out. And only Drudge picked this up two days ago. Three days ago, the media was saying, I made it up, Roger. And it really frustrates me that they're like, it's extraordinary. You can expect this to be happening in a in a Muslim country, in a Middle Eastern country, that is happening in the UK just boggles the mind. And the silence of the national media, of the mainstream media, with the exception of Drudge, uh, it, it, it's extraordinary. Uh, Kalen Robertson, and he joins us uh, right now on the street. Again, he had the bravery to go on the air when no one else would. He's Tommy's spokesperson. Tommy told me that directly before he even went to jail about a week before. Uh, Tommy did is fighting for his life right now in the Muslim wing. Uh, the media spins it and goes, well, it's a Muslim wing. The whole prison isn't 70 percent, only that wing. So they've picked an Islamic prison with a Muslim wing to throw in Tommy Robinson. And he's got new developments uh, for us. Uh, Kalen, thank you for joining us and, and, and giving us updates. It's, it's good to see his lawyers coming out and confirming everything you said a day after you said it. Yeah, thanks so much for having us as well, and thank you so much for covering all of this stuff. Sorry, it's just very busy in London. We're trying to trying to do this period really quickly right now. So basically, um, the um, news reports that you've just been talking about, completely insane. They said that it was 70% made up, nothing out of nowhere. Tommy told us directly that it looked like that. It looked about 70% on his wing, and they were saying, oh, well, there's no such thing as a 70% Muslim. So the whole thing's nonsense. But they're using their usual tactics to try to discredit everything that we're doing and to try to discredit all of the facts to try and brush it all over and say that nothing is actually wrong. So obviously reiterating our phone call a couple of days ago, the facts are still the same. We have had a little bit of communication since then and he still is OK. However, I can reconfirm everything we spoke about the other night. He was moved to a really dangerous prison. It was really bad. Uh, it has a much higher Muslim population. It's actually got a, a record of having... Um, terrible, um, violent, violent crime, if you, if you look it up as well. Um, he's actually just been moved to solitary confinement, and he's sort of in a room with a blue mat on the floor, completely bizarre. Um, so we know that at least he's safe in that period for now, but because he's in that situation, it means that communication is going to be a little bit more difficult in the meantime. So we don't know if he's going to be immediately put back into that really dangerous wing. We don't know if he's going to be shoved uh, to another prison that's even more dangerous. Those threats have been passed on to him. But what we do know is obviously that he's been moved there. He's been moved to a more dangerous situation. It wasn't by the governors. It wasn't by the prison guards. It wasn't by any usual process that normally takes place in a prison like this. It was sent down straight from the top, from the home office. Completely unprecedented. These things don't normally happen. Um, and that's why we've got so many people now writing to the home office. So much pressure from people in America trying to say, what on earth are you doing? You're basically putting someone in the firing line with direct orders from the top. It doesn't make any sense. And those are the, are the new developments. And that's the bombshell news. It's up on Infowars.com. Thank God Drudge linked to it last night. Order to send Tommy Robinson to heavily Muslim populated prison came from the top activist safety and danger as a result of high risk status being removed from his file. Uh, and now you say that they've thrown him back in solitary confinement, which is more cruel and unusual punishment for reporting that there was a trial on Muslim grooming gangs, which even the media reported on. They said he reported on the trial itself. And so 13 months in the Islamic wing, a certain death sentence, or 13 months in solitary confinement, silencing him, being able to talk to you every few days. Uh, so I guess you haven't been able to talk to him since you talked to him uh, on Tuesday and, and, and gave us that emergency message. No, it seemed like they really weren't happy about that information going out and they seemed to cut off a lot of things. We have had some communication, but not directly between him and I, that he is actually still safe and he's okay, but they're really clamping down on the information that's coming out. He doesn't want him talking to the outside world. He doesn't want any, they don't want any fuss being made. They don't want you doing what you're doing. They don't want Judge putting it on the front page. They want it to be a nothing burger. They tried to silence it as soon as he got him from prison, prison, as we know, but that didn't work. And now they're trying to say that it's all nonsense because the statistics are slightly off. But that's what they're trying to do. So they don't want any information coming out about him because it builds up a frenzy. It gets people upset. It gets people up rightfully. Um, and so the next stages are basically going through the legal process. That's what we're doing now and doing everything we can to make sure that he's not in that situation, that he can have communication to the outside world. Because he wants this information to get out. He told me directly on Tuesday the facts that he told me he wanted out immediately as fast as possible. Because if anything does happen to him and he's at massive risk, he wants the world to know exactly what's going on. And, uh, and he knows people are listening. 
and again, when he first got arrested, the, the, for three days there was a D notice where the media couldn't report he was arrested, and they had news saying, I made that up and you made that up. Then they confirmed that. Then they had an order not to cover the demonstrations. I mean, this is so authoritarian what the UK is becoming. And now Roger and I are talking about being political prisoners. We're under attack. Paul Manafort has been grabbed and put in jail today. I mean, this is really wild. Oh, people don't seem to realize that it's going to happen to them next. It's bizarre because it's Tommy and because he's perceived as extreme. They think, oh, of course he's getting thrown away. He, he looks a little bit rough, doesn't he? He looks like he'd be capable of that. But after Tommy, it's going to come for you. It's going to come for everybody else. It's going to come for people in the middle. It's going to come from anyone who's even slightly dissident and who has said anything even slightly against the government or the PC policies or, or anything that's been going on in the last sort of 10 years in Britain. And they don't realize how creeping this process is and how slow and how creeping it is. And they don't care. It's so blatant as well. They'll just make him disappear. One second, Tommy's on the street bringing the facts. He's got millions of views. He's in the public spotlight. The next second, he's in a room for 23 hours a day on a mat on the floor. They make people disappear within seconds. And they can still get away with it. Well, just about. We'll see what's going to happen soon. But um, it's, uh, it's, it's absolutely baffling how blatant and open and in the open. All right, let's talk about what we can do and, and, and just the, what's we happening in the UK when we come back. Go ahead.